Morning. It's Tuesday. First day here of this week. Yesterday was the Needham Market Cars and Classics morning on a Monday. Um, lovely weather for it. So again, show for the Rolls Royce down there. Um, and then, yeah, did a few odds and sods and that was it really. So back in today, what we've got to do, first job is to get that discovery up on the lift so I can undo the engine mounts, undo the downpipe and to make sure the gearbox is separate. Um, and then I think it's just the power steering pipes and we should be able to lift the engine out. The Range Rover P38 is going over its MOT today, so I've got to nip out and do that shortly. Um, also, I have had the extended looms for the Defender arrive, which means we can now mount the uh, ECU inside the car as opposed to have it dangling in the engine bay. Um, but I need to get this disco done first so I can get all this crap that's piled up into the back of it. And then we can pull the Defender out and get on with it. So let's get this def uh, disco up on the lift. There we go. The exhaust is off. The engine mount nuts are off both sides. Not that you, oh, you can just about to see it. I've just got to undo the power steering pipes there off of the pump. And I think I'm just going to quickly pull this steering guard off as well while it's up in the air. And then once we come back from MOT, we should be good to lift it out. I have never, ever had such an issue getting an engine and gearbox out. Well, it should have just been an engine. I don't know what's going on, but the engine and gearbox won't come apart. They will separate perfectly fine, but I just can't get them apart. I think he's done something while putting the... Um, our under weather, he's tried to put the gearbox on, got it caught on the splines of the clutch wrong, and the clutch plate is now stuck on the splines of the gearbox and obviously won't come past the clutch plate cover. So I had to pull the whole lot out at once, hanging by probably the clutch, which means the clutch is going to be no good now. Uh, well, even if he's smashed the gearbox on them splines, it's probably no good anyway, but... Oh, uh, yeah... So the drum was getting hung up on the anti-roll bar. So let's disconnect the anti-roll bar, get that out of the way. And then the drum was getting hung up on the diff flange down there, on there. And it wouldn't come past that because the side of the gearbox was getting caught underneath the engine mount. And if you went further back to get them over those, the gear still, or the selector was getting caught on there, on the tunnel. Um, and I have taken the actual gear stick off. It was the transfer box lever. And it was all hanging by one seatbelt because I thought it was just going to be the engine. Oh, but it's out. So now I've got to work out how to separate the engine and gearbox. I'll have the transfer box off first to make it a bit easier. Um, and then, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what we're going to do. But it's out. At least it means that once I've got that separated, I've got that engine ready to go in the Defender. Um, obviously, I'm now going to have to change the clutch because that was a brand new clutch. But I reckon he's mucked it up trying to put the gearbox back on. So we'll have to get a new clutch for it. Um, and then, yeah. It can go in the Defender in a bit, but first off, we need to get this sorted. Get this back on the ramp so I can fill it with all the rubbish. Get it on the trailer and out the way. So, it's now Tuesday afternoon, I'm going home. So I'll come back with a fresh face in the morning. Oh, and I, I also had to take out the gearbox cross member as well. So it would go low enough to go forward. Forgot about that. Right, well. You can see it's a bit dark in here. Um, got that engine out and gearbox and all that malarkey yesterday, like I said. The power was going a bit funny in here because we had terrible rain outside. Kept coming on and off, on and off. I was doing most of it in the dark. Um, and it went off at four o'clock and hasn't come back on. And it's now nearly midday on Wednesday. 
um, they've got a problem on site that they can't find at the minute, so it's all turned off. So I have cleared most of that rubbish. There's just them subframes that are on the pallet um, that will need to go on and be strapped down separate. Uh, the disco is full of all the scrap metal. So I'm just having a refreshment and then maybe I'll clean that wall and get painting. Because if I'm not gonna have any power today, there's not a great deal else I can do. So I thought maybe if I clean that wall down and started painting, um, that, that's the kind of thing I can do with no power. So yeah, bit of a pain, but we'll have to do what we can do. Still no electric. Good morning, it's now Thursday. Um, I've got electric back on, as you can see the lights are on. Um, I've also painted that wall. It's supposed to be bright orange, but it looks a bit red. I don't know. Hmm. Um, ignore the top. I've got to repaint the top yet in white because it's all filthy. So I want to repaint it. Don't worry about the little wire. Uh, the little bits up there that I've overpainted. Um, right. So now we've got power. We can get this disco on the lift. Get the rear brakes off because we need those. And get it on the trailer out of the way. And then we can do something else. I don't know what yet. But let's make a start. All right, and we're loaded with all the crap. So I'm going to put this next door for, for now and have a carry on tidying up in here. And we'll go to the scrapyard with this very soon. How do? It's still dark in here. It's Friday. Power's gone off again. Got an electrician coming this afternoon, so. I'm sort of sitting around waiting. You can see the trailer out there. I've um, been to the scrapyard this morning, got rid of the Discovery and all the subframes. Uh, and then I've taken a couple of cars for MOT. One I've picked up again. The other one I'm just waiting to see if I get a phone call this afternoon to say it's done, otherwise it's gonna be Tuesday. Um, so yeah, another kind of nothing week really. <sighs> Hopefully next week we'll get we'll get moving. Um, we we'll kind of well, other than it's dark in here, I kind of can't use any tools. I can't put the compressor on. You know that kind of thing. So I kind of I'm a bit flagging. I could probably do quite a bit, but I've got a lot of stuff laying around. I've got to go and put out next door, but I can't be bothered. So. I think I'll leave this here for this week, I reckon. There's not a great deal else to report, unfortunately, so I'm sorry. It's been a bit dull. I'll try and get some stuff done soon. Um, I'm yet to separate that engine and gearbox. As I say, I think the clutch plate is stuck on the input shaft for the gearbox, and therefore it won't come past the cover plate. So I think I'm gonna have to try and spread it apart a bit at a time and undo the pressure plate off of the flywheel and I reckon that will separate it um, so yeah so that's a job for next week ideally I'd like to get that engine in the chassis um, and then we can progress with that but I, I really want to spend a few days on mine um, now that looms come I really want to pull that out now I've got the room I want to pull that out and actually get cracking on it that Bracket I made, the second bracket I made for the header tank isn't mad enough, it's too too thin. So I need to get a bit of th thicker metal and um, and make a new one of those. Anything else? Fit that loom. We need to black out the LEDs for the three Amigos that would have been Discovery, the ABS and all that, because that'll all be lit up. Um, I was gonna pop the LEDs, but someone said it might muck up something else, so the best thing is just to paint them, so. I need to paint over them so they're not illuminated. And then, yeah, I think it's almost time for an MOT, you know. Fingers crossed. Right, have a lovely weekend. It's a nice long one. I'll see you next week. Tell guys. Hello, it's Sunday. A little bit of bonus on the end of this one. We're loading up. Just check the tire pressures and we're off to do a collection.
and here she is. Um, my friend's International uh, 275. It's here for Open Gardens Weekend. My neighbour is opening his garden along with a few other villagers to um, show off his wares. So this is going to be a prop on the driveway to sort of lure people in and have a bit of a spectacle. So that's what um, I was off to collect today. So it's now resting in my garage for uh, for the night and then I'll get it out in the morning. And here it is, sat proud, ready for the open garden day. So just stuck a sign on it to say, please do not climb on this tractor. Um, and then that should bring the punters in. So there you go. Right, so this morning I'm not in the workshop. Um, I popped over here to drop off the International after borrowing it for the Open Gardens Day for the display. And he was struggling getting the two halves back together after changing the clutch. And as you can see, there is a, a rail, like train track type set up so you can jack one side up on one, one half up on the other, slide them apart. Um, and then obviously the reverse when it goes back together. He was struggling a bit trying to get it together so we uh we set to it and there she is she is back together so she is a 50s fordson power major so we'll uh we'll see this come together over the next few weeks hopefully right so we've got this discovery in it's got a noisy fuel pump and the customer wants it changed he's purchased a new pump apparently an original lr1 so we've got to fit that. He told me to cut a hole in the carpet to get to the access panel. No, I'm not going to do that. So we're going to undo the rail at the back. We're going to undo the seat mounts and we're going to pull the carpet out from underneath properly. So we get to it. I don't want to cut the carpet. That's a bodging way of doing it. So let's get cracking. And there we go. Undone the trim, pulled it out, undone the seat runner, trims pulled them out lifted the uh, hooks up so the carpet goes through it and we're there don't have to cut the carpet at all so now to unscrew this and get to the pump Christ is it a noisy fuel pump or is it a creature living in there that's making the squeaking <laughs> yeah I think we need to hoover that out first all right so once it was hoovered out you can knock well undo these pipes first they've got two well you can see it there that you squeeze them together and pull them out. They are colour coded. Um, obviously, if they're clean and obviously easy to see, it's better to take a photo to remember the um, the order in case you forget. Then you've got to knock this ring off. It's got little lumps on it, so you can get a flathead screwdriver and just tap it round and undo it until the the pump is loose. So now we can just move them pipes out of the way and lift this one out. Right, new ones back in. I've just got to clean up some brake fluid and collect the pipes up. Now, as a note, a lot of people make this mistake. The gasket on the pipe, on the pump, they put around the base of the pump and then try and get it in. You can't. This has to sit in a lip on the tank. So you need to put that on the lip of the tank first in there and then slide the pump over the top, being careful of this bit of hose. You've got to manipulate this bit of hose past the pipe so it seals. Um, otherwise, if you try and put that on there and then try and close it and put the ring on, you'll never do it. You just won't do it. So that has got to go on the tank first, then the pump goes in. So that comes all the way off, completely off, sit in the tank, then slide this in, minding this bit of hose. So with it all connected back up, the next position is to turn the ignition on, press the accelerator five times, you get the flashing um, EML light, and that is now doing its bleed procedure. So it will stop and start the pump for a while, but you can kind of just about hear it. It's just bleeding its way through. So I'm just going to make sure it all bleeds up nice before I put it back together. But that's pretty much job done. Right, well, I've been busy this week. Not a lot of action other than workshop action. So as you can see, I've now got a clear space there, pretty much. And my wall, I've started. I've put my old cigarette cards up with all the Land Rovers and Fords and MGs and stuff. Put the clock up. Put my old Defender steering wheel up. The CCTV is obviously there and cleared most of this space. Let me take it you downstairs and show you. So where the racking once was, as I've seen or showed already, it's up there. Uh, this lot here is a load of scrap. 
so I need another car to fill up. These are bits for the Defender that I'll be getting to. Um, I've got, I don't know if I need it all, but it's just bits I've saved the Defender. So, the wall's supposed to be orange, but it looks red. Um, careful, because there's some Rudy's on there. So that's me pinboard of all my old memories and stuff. And obviously I've got the CCTV up there. So when I'm downstairs, I can see if there's, who's outside when I'm um, working down here. Got the cigarette cards. So we've got Land Rover Series 1, Series 2, Series 3, Defender, Range Rover Discovery, RS, Fords, um, Morgan. Now it's a different frame because my Nan's sister gave me that. Uh, and then MG's there, a sign there and obviously room for stuff there. The clock and the Defender steering wheel. I've also got a load of hooks come, that come specifically for wheels because I'm going to hang probably one of each of my favorite wheels on the wall as well. Um, I've got some of them already, including uh, Escort RS Turbo, uh, Vauxhall Cavalier Turbo, I need to get an Escort Cosworth, uh, Metro, things like that. Uh, the Defender's sitting here. So obviously um, it's down the side of the stairs, but I can pull it forward and work on it, no problem at all. Um, that's me door stop for the big door. They need to go in the bin. Um, caravan steps and a kettle that needs to go in the caravan now i've moved the mini roof from over there it was stood up there for ages um so i've moved my shelf over and sorted all my paints and fluids and stuff out and they're there out the way i was going to throw that shelf away and put them somewhere else but perfect space now that mini roof's gone all this is all tight you know it looks messy but it's all tidy compared to what it was so i've got loads of floor space and I've also utilised the corner. Now this was just a dead area, but they are cantilever because there's no support on this side, but with them hooked in there, they're plenty strong enough to hold up. You know, there's trays of nuts and bolts and everything there. So absolutely fine. The weld is underneath, the dollies are all down there, which move, meant I had an extra space here for another pallet. Now this, this, and this are things that I haven't got a home for at the minute. We're just piled on here. So I've got to go through this little bit and find somewhere to put everything. Um, obviously, the 300 TDI is there. I still need to split the gearbox. That's a job to do. But, um, oh, and that wheel is obviously the spare for the Defender. So that'll be out the way. So the room I've achieved is unbelievable. The workshop is so much nicer. Um, over the back here at the minute, I've got the MG Midget Engine. So at some point soon, I need to get back on that. Just my box of boxes for when I pack stuff. The engine crane sits nicely under there. Uh, I've got to find somewhere for that ladder. And I've also got to go through these cupboards yet. Yeah, I haven't got around to those, but we're getting there. So yes, yeah, sorry there's not been much for the last couple of weeks. I've grouped it all together into one because I've just concentrated on being in here. Um, I'm hoping now I've got the more room and I've got nice space. I've got plenty of room and an easier place to work, put it that way, because we've got lots and lots to do. So I'm now gonna back the MG in the hole over there. So I'll quickly show you that before I go. And there it is, it's in. So loads of room around it. So if I really needed to park something in here and work, I could put it right up against the wall and work on something over here. Um, I can move this over yet, obviously, if I need to when it's, when it's driving bring it over and forward and I can get all around this and all around something over there. I can even just lift the stairs because they're all on wheels, pull the stairs out of the way, got loads of room. So, as you can see, it's a massive improvement. Don't know why it took me so many years to bloody do it, but we're getting there. <sighs> right, have a lovely weekend. Um, I am definitely going this time. I know I said see you later a little while ago, but I thought I might as well group the two weeks into one because not a lot has gone on. So have a lovely one. See you next week where we might actually get some work done.